subscribe this channel for educational videos and also don't forget to press the bell icon in order to get the instant notifications of our latest stuff hello everyone i welcome you all to this online course on wireless communication as this is our introductory lecture so we will give you an introduction of wireless communication and cellular systems so let's start this lecture Now, what is wireless communication? So I can very easily define this uh, wireless communication by this definition. It is a type of communication or data transfer that is performed wirelessly. That is, you transfer the data from one point to another point without using the wires. That is called as your wireless communication. And due to this wireless communication, many advancements have been brought to our lives. Like with the help of these wireless communication systems, you can control your TV. You can use the remote system that will work for few meters. Up to few meters, you can transmit the information. That is your TV remote with the help of which you are controlling your TV. And on the other side, you can transmit up to thousands of kilometers like using your cell phones, using satellite phones. That is an example of communication that will transmit the information up to thousands of kilometers. So these are the two main examples. One will work for few meters and other will work for thousands of kilometers. Other examples of wireless communication systems are GPS units, garage door openers, wireless computer mouse and keyboards, wireless headphones, radio receivers, satellite TVs, broadcast TVs, cordless phones, etc. Fine. All these things, they are working wirelessly and for the purpose, they are using radio waves. So we can say that the kind of communication is radio communication and this radio communication happens with the help of waves. They are called as radio waves and these radio waves are basically the electromagnetic waves. And the frequency of uh, these waves uh, is uh, in a range of 30 hertz to 300 gigahertz. This radio communication is further uh, classified into two main categories. You can say uh, as the space radio communication where it uses uh, one or more space stations like uh, your satellites or other space objects and uh, the other one is the terrestrial radio communication the communication uh, except space radio communication or space astronomy uh, are called as uh, terrestrial radio communication and uh, so there are two types of radio communication now what are the advantages of these uh, wireless systems uh, that we will see now the first advantage uh, that I see uh, of these wireless systems is cost effectiveness. Uh, as we see that uh, there is no physical infrastructure required or you can say no much physical infrastructure is required in wireless communication systems. So that's why uh, they, uh, they take low cost and also uh, we require low maintenance because there is less infrastructure required for this type of communication systems. So we don't have much physical infrastructure and that's why we have low maintenance in such systems. The other advantage uh, of these system is flexibility. Flexibility is another advantage that means you don't have any location constraint in such type of communication and uh, for example you have miners they are in the mines and they are using satellite phones in order to communicate with their bare ones at their home. So you don't have any location constraint like you need not to be in office, you need not to be in some telephone booth in order to communicate. So that is that is what we call flexibility and this flexibility is provided by these wireless systems. Next advantage is convenience. Because of this, uh, the life uh, has become very convenient and uh, you have your cell phones and you keep your cell phones in your pockets and uh, with the Wi-Fi systems, your cell phones remain connected and you move uh, around the city being connected to the network all the time. So there is no physical connection required. Okay, that is what we call convenience that happens due to these wireless systems. And the next one is speed. I gave you an example of your TV remote. You can control your TV very quickly. You can shift the frequency of your TV channels very quickly. And uh, that is what we call speed, but a kind of. Then you have accessibility. Uh, you have remote areas uh, like where you cannot lay down the wires. So those areas uh, can be, uh, you know, handled by these wireless systems. Uh, like you have to provide online education 
to some remote areas where your wireline systems cannot work you cannot lay down the wires and uh, there these systems these wireless systems they work very efficiently so remote area access is an uh, example of such system these are the five main advantages uh, of these wireless systems there are many other advantages you can go through and search from different books and different literature resources but uh, these are the main uh, advantages of these wireless systems okay now uh, the evolution of these wireless systems and or you can say the evolution of mobile radio communication uh, how these uh, mobile radio communication systems were evolved uh, that we will see now here you see that uh, the first telephone wire system was introduced in 1877 in 1877 first telephone wire system it was not wireless it is it was a wired system it was introduced in 1877 and uh, the communication in that uh, time was a miracle for our ancestors and uh, that was a quite challenging task uh, uh, at that time that is in the year 1877 and after that there was a scientist uh, named uh, uh, marconi and in 1895 this scientist initiated the first wireless telegraph this was the first wireless telegraph and here the um, information was the textual information or the symbolic messages that were being transmitted and this was initiated by marconi in 1895 and these were the only things uh, that happened uh, till 1920 and uh, till 1920 this communication era is known as the pioneer era okay and after that since 1920 to 1979 the age the era is known as pre-cellular era this time that is from 1920 to 1979 is known as the pre-cellular era and during this era in the year 1946 first commercial mobile telephone system was launched by bell laboratories in usa okay the first commercial mobile telephone system was launched in 1946 in the Bell Laboratories. That is in the pre-cellular era. And later on in the 1940s, push-to-talk telephone systems were introduced. They were using 120 kilohertz of radio frequency band and they were working in a half duplex mode. Okay, push-to-talk. Then uh, there were the systems we used to push the button and we uh, used to record our voice and then we release a button and then this voice was used to be transmitted okay and these were the push to talk telephone systems and after that that is beyond 1979 to till date that is, that is the present time it is known as the cellular era okay now we have to study about the cellular systems or cellular era okay so next is cellular systems when I talk about these cellular systems, what comes to your mind? Of course, your mobile phone, your cell phone. So I will ask you, what do you do with your cell phone? And the answer is very much clear. You do the voice communication. You send some SMSs. You do the web surfing. You send emails. You take pictures, video streaming. You check your heartbeat. Okay, there are different services that are performed by using your cell phones. And if I ask you another question that are you familiar with these parameters okay these parameters are data rate bandwidth sinr multiple access techniques bit error rate throughput carrier frequency mimo so these are certain parameters that you study while uh, in in such courses like wireless communication data communication uh, in network courses you study these parameters if no if you know half of them then it's fine uh, you have certain some knowledge of about these uh, concepts okay and now i will again tell you that take out your phone and uh, you dial some code uh, like this star hash 0011 hash and it is for samsung phone for other uh, phones you can search in the google and you will you will have some uh, information related to network parameters there are various network parameters that you can get the information by dialing this code from your samsung phones and uh, out of those parameters i have taken few and the first one is bandwidth and if you see that in front of bandwidth it is written 10 megahertz 50 megahertz or 20 megahertz that means you are using lte systems means you are in the fourth generation and you are using lte systems and the other parameter that is frequency band indicator and uh, i have tested this uh, on my geo uh, sim geo phone and uh, for the downlink and uplink traffic the frequency 
spectrum is this 38750 for downlink and 38750 is for uplink this is for geo and uh, for airtel or other operators it may be uh, different and uh, the third parameter is base station id and uh, you will see there's uh, one uh, this parameter th this is called as plmn and this tells the which particular operator you are using as i have tested this on uh, a geo network and this particular number that is 405860 is assigned to a geo operator okay and then you have serving cell id this is the base station id to which you are currently uh, attached okay so uh, for different operators you can have different ids and also this uh, plmn number is different for different operators fine now in server systems uh, we have different generations uh, right from 1g to 5g and uh, now we will study briefly uh, 1g generation uh, so it was introduced in 1970s at uh, in AT and T Bell Laboratories uh, in USA, and it was uh, actually deployed in early 1980s. Okay, and uh, the phones, the wireless phones at that time, they were used to be called as car phones because they were uh, quite big in size, like bricks, and uh, they had very poor battery performance, and uh, they were attached to your cars. Although you have mobility, but uh, inside the car you can move, uh, but not you. Uh, you were not able to keep those phones in your pockets, so they were not uh, perfectly wireless phones. And uh, during that time, in the first generation, and uh, there was a standard that is called as uh, NMT (Nordic Mobile Telephony). It was uh, uh, deployed in 1981, and it was deployed in the region uh, of uh, North European region, and. Uh, Another standard was there, which is called as TACS, Total Access Communication System, and it was deployed in 1983, and it was deployed in England, Ireland, and Japan. And uh, there was another standard, which is called as AMPS, American Mobile Phone System. It was deployed in 1983 and adopted in uh, US, that is United States, South Korea, and Australia. So these were the three different standards in the first generation, and uh, they were deployed in the different regions and uh, one thing uh, about these standards was that the main drawback the subscribers of nmt were not able to communicate any of the other two and the same was the case with the other two subscribers okay so they were not the compatible to each other all these three standards they were not compatible with each other so subscribers of one standards were not able to talk with the subscribers of the other standard Okay, that was the main drawback of this uh, 1G. And the keyword for this first generation is analog. It was completely analog. It was not digital. So the keyword with this generation is analog. Only 20 million people uh, had adopted this first generation cellular systems. And that is uh, only 0.5% of the total world's population. Okay, only 20 million people were using this first generation and that costs only 0.5 percent of the total world's population and the cell structure was first time introduced in the first generation this is what we call as a cell structure here you can see hexagonal uh, shape is the your cell and this white colored is your base station that is your uh, bts and this is what we call the cell structure and it was first introduced in the first generation and uh, we have to uh, study about these uh, this cell structure later in the uh, course in detail and right now you just see these are uh, similar to the biological cells uh, which have uh, certain boundaries and uh, with a base station okay and this first generation was completely analog uh, and uh, the multiple access technique used in this uh, in this uh, first generation was fdma that is frequency division multiple access technique here you can see uh, the frequency is divided into different channels channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 and it is brought some information is broadcasted on these channels and the user 1 user 2 and user 3 are using the information just to avoid the collision so frequency is divided into different different uh, spectral bands just to avoid the collision now the drawbacks of first generation system large phone size uh, the phone size was quite large uh, in first generation and it was of the size of a brick and uh, that's why these were called as the car phones and they had very poor battery performance 
poor voice quality because a uh, uh, lot of noise was there uh, during the conversation and uh, it is very difficult to cancel the noise in the analog system so we had very poor voice quality in the first generation and there was no security and uh, because uh, this was completely analog system and no cdma techniques were employed that time and uh, expensive service fee uh, obviously uh, it has it was a very expensive service at that time and that's why very few people uh, could adopt this uh, first generation uh, cello systems okay now second generation that is 2g and the keyword with this uh, uh, generation is digital okay it was deployed in 1990s and the first standard was deployed in 1991 that is gsm the other standard which is called as cdma the alternate name is is95 and it was deployed in 1995 there was another standard which is called as us tdma or alternatively known as us136 and uh, pdc in japan these were the standards uh, of 2g systems and uh, they were deployed in uh, 1990s okay 700 million users were there in the second generation and that amounts to 11% of the total world's population and out of these 700 million uh, people 70% were the subscribers of gsm system 12% were the uh, subscribers of cdma system and 10% uh, percent people were uh, the subscribers of us tdma and 7% were the subscribers of PD, pdc system okay the digital modulation techniques used were bpsk and qpsk binary phase shift keying and quadrature phase, phase shift keying and where we used to send two bits per symbol in the uh, transmission okay use of tdma and cdma as multiple access techniques the multiple access techniques were tdma and cdma that is time division multiple access technique and code division multiple access sms and data services were enabled because this was a digital service and that's why sms and data services were enabled and the data rate was quite low and it was 14.4 kb per second to 64 kb per second and it is considered to be very low data rate and it is not a recommended data rate for web surfing now 3g services or 3g generation the keyword with the 3g generation is voice and data communication so it has emphasis on both voice as well as data communication it was deployed in the air 2000 and uh, 2000 onward the first standard was wcdma and it was deployed in 2001 the other standard is cdma 2000 and it was deployed in the uh, year 2002 there was another standard imt 2001 it was introduced by or announced by this itu high order digital modulation technique was used in third generation and this technique is 16 qam where we used to send four bits per symbol okay earlier we were sending two bits per symbol now here we have higher order uh, digital modulation technique that is 16 qam and here we are sending four bits per symbol and the shift from 2g to 3g was not a revolution it was just a technical evolution on the other side we can say the shift from first generation to second generation was a revolution because we had a revolution from analog systems to digital systems but here we just enhanced the certain components in the 2g systems in order to shift on to 3g systems so we will not say this is revolution this was a technical evolution the enhanced data rate in the 3g uh, systems are in the third generation in the year 2000 it was around 384 kb per second to 2 mb per uh, 2 mb per second and later in the year 2008 it was up to 10 mb per second and now thanks to the smartphones video calling web surfing and video streaming uh, was possible in the third generation systems now 4g systems are for four generation fourth generation the keyword is data here that means the total communication is on data and the voice is a tiny component of this data it was basically designed for data and deployed in the year 2010 and over 7.5 billion people are using it so this 7.5 billion is more than the 100 percent of the population 
of the world so this is this happened because uh, someone over there may be using uh, three or four phones that's why it is over 100% uh, the total world's population it has uh, more bandwidth that ranges from 5 megahertz to 20 megahertz and the multiple access technique used is OFDM that is orthogonal uh, frequency division multiple access and uh, engineers say that OFDM is LTE sometimes and uh, alternatively it is known as the LTE that is uh, long term evolution a standard for uh, four generation it has high data rate that is uh, 10 times faster than 3G the previous systems and uh, those are the 3G systems it is 10 times faster than those and uh, the data rate can go up to 1 GB per second that is very huge data rate now the connectivity up to 10 raised to 5 units per square kilometer can be connected that is these many subscribers in a square kilometer can be accommodated by using this 4G standards are for in the fourth generation these many that that is tens of thousands of users in the square kilometer so these many users can be connected in a square kilometer in 4G systems it has high mobility support like if you are having your cell phone and you are in the train that train is moving at a speed of 350 km per hour so you can remain connected to the network services even at this speed if you are using 4G networks or 4G systems these 4G systems are truly IP based communication systems that is voice over data VOLTE voice over LTE long term evolution that is voice over data so there is only one protocol and that is IP based communication protocol and uh, only one standard there are no separate protocol for voice only one standard one protocol that is IP based communication fine and now what next as we are using 4G systems in the present time now what is next okay yes you are right next is your 5G systems yes and why do we need 5G systems when we have large data rate this is my question to you when we have large data rate we are quite comfortable in video streaming we are quite comfortable in video calling uh, with this uh, data rate that we are having in the 4G then why do we need these 5G, 5G systems the answer is there are still many applications like IoT virtual reality 3D video games 3D video communication but they are not handled or they are not supported by the 4G systems that is why we require another generation and that is your 5G system and the 5G systems they are to be de deployed in in uh, 2020 that is in the present year and uh, it is expected to have more data rate more connectivity and uh, with enhanced features as compared to 4g so it is expected to have more packet data rate in 5g and uh, the expectation is up to 20 gb per second of data rate is expected and more spectral efficiency is expected in 5g systems and uh, that is three times more than 4g systems and uh, if we say that three times more than 4g systems so it is up to uh, 100 megahertz of spectral uh, frequency massive connectivity so in 5g it is expected to have 10 raised to the power 6 units per square kilometer earlier in the 4g systems we had 10 raised to our 5 units per square kilometer but now we are expecting 10 raised to our 6 units per square kilometer in 5G system that is 10 times more than the 4G systems okay high mobility speed so the mobility speed here is 500 kilometer per hour and in 4G systems it is only 350 kilometers per hour the transmission delay in 5G systems is expected to be less than or equal to 1 millisecond although it was 10 millisecond in the 4G system so these are the certain improvements that we are expecting in the 5G systems over 4G systems okay and uh, it is expected to be deployed in the year 2020 now what we have studied till now in the cellular system that is from generation 1 to generation 5 so we will uh, give you a brief comparison of all these generations and it is here 
1G, 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G. These are the general services given by these uh, generations. So the first one is the release year. 1G was released in 1980s, 2G was released in 1990s, 3G was released in 2000 onwards, 4G was released in 2010 onwards and 5G is expected to be launched in 2020. Number of subscribers in 1G were 20 million, that is 0.5% of the total world's population. Number of subscribers in 2G systems were 700 million and it is approximately 11% of the total world's population. Number of subscribers in 3G systems were 1.8 billion and it is 27% of the total world's population. And number of subscribers in 4G systems is 7 billion and that is over 100% of the total world's population. And in 5G, it is expected to have more than 7.5 billion or even more than 8 billion people who will adopt this 5G communication system and it is uh, much more than the total world's population. The voice in 1G was analog and the rest of the systems were digital and in 4G and 5G it is voltage. Transmission in 1G was uh, frequency modulated that is analog and the rest of the uh, these generations were having digital transmission. The data rate in 1G is uh, not specified because uh, it, it didn't have any support to data and uh, in 2G you can see the data is quite low in 3G it is uh, quite appropriate and in 4G it is quite comfortable you can see up to 1 GB per second of data rate can be achieved in 4G systems and in 5G you can have 20 GB per second of data rate and now we will take the example of this uh, if you want to download the 800 mega uh, bits of file uh, you cannot download in 1G because you don't have the data support in 1G and uh, with 2G the worst case scenario is 6 hours to download this file and the best case scenario is 30 minutes and with 3G networks you can download the same file uh, with best case scenario in uh, 10 minutes and the worst case scenario is 30 minutes uh, with the highest speed in 4G you can download the same file in 6 seconds and uh, with the lowest speed in the 4G you can download this file in 1 minute and uh, it is quite magical in 5th generation that is it will take only 0.5 seconds to download this 800 megabits of data. Uh, then you have multiple access techniques. Uh, for 1G you have FDMA, for 2G you have TDMA, CDMA, for 3G you have CDMA, uh, for 4G and 5G you have OFDMA. You have to study these multiple access techniques later in this course in detail. And the different standards in 1G are NMT, TAX, AMPS. There are three standards. And uh, in 2G you have two standards. In 3G you have two different standards and in 4G and 5G you have only single standard okay this is a brief comparison of all these generation and uh, this is what, uh, what I had to show in this uh, uh, introductory lecture so thank you so much for watching